Okay, we are live. I'm going to invite now Paige to start the session. And we are starting soon. Okay, we should be live now. We're live. We're all Yay! Live. <laughs> it works. <laughs> I don't know why it happened. Very strange. Technology is weird. All right. Well, anyway, we, we made it. We made it. So anyway, again, good morning to you. Good evening to you. <laughs> and it's great. Thanks very much for uh, accepting to do this, um, this session page. I'm very excited to do it. Uh, and it looks like Instagram has improved all the features. So hopefully it's going to be very good. Yes, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So um, before we, we start, I would like to introduce you to the audience that are watching live or the audience that may watch this um, this live session later for them to know who you are uh, and also give a bit of an introduction on why we're, what are we doing today. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, Faith Mitchell, um, you are a coach and a public speaker and you have a Bachelor in Psychology and Master's in Counseling by the University of Colorado and uh, you are a certified coach by the Institute of Life Coaching. Uh, you have been, you are offering one-to-one -one life coaching sessions, including three lifestyle clarity packs, depending on the needs of the clients. Uh, and you are also the host of the Page uh, Lessons, uh, Page, Page Lessons podcast, um, where you provide uh, the best advice and takeaways on topics such as relationships, career transformations, and overall life transitions. So for anyone watching and for anyone uh, Check in this video later on. You can find more information on Paige on Paige's, uh, and Paige and, and her services at uh, https uh, coach. Is that correct? You got it. Yep. Or, of course, you can follow her on Instagram in coach. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that introduction. No worries. Uh, so... Um, with that having said that, the topic for today is about imposter syndrome. Uh, and I thought it was a great topic to discuss with you because of your background in counseling. Uh, and imposter syndrome is, is, in the, is in the mouths of many people around the world. Um, and I think it's very good to have your point of view on this topic. And we, as, as, the, as the topic says, we wanted to deconstruct it a bit for people to understand exactly what it is uh, and also to try to get a bit of um, uh, a view on how to identify whether you, they are going through it and uh, finally to get to a point whether we can give some tips or some ideas on how they can potentially overcoming, overcome it by themselves or perhaps with the help of a professional. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good to me. Okay, good stuff. So first of all, I wanted to get into the, into the detail of what imposter syndrome is. And I'm going to make a very brief statement and I'm going to leave the fourth to you so that you can expand on that. Is that okay? <laughs> totally good. Right. So imposter syndrome, the first thing and first thing that I tell to everyone, uh, and, 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 and I do this ever since I, 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 I got instructed of what imposter syndrome was, is that it's not an actual syndrome. It's not a medically recognized syndrome and i like to call it or actually i heard it in two in two ways but the way that i heard it I, I read it on the literature is that it's a phenomenon it's something that happens um and it's it's something it's it's an affection that happened to, happens to i i think the last statistics that i saw were 82 83 percent of the population at some point in their lives it's not like everyone has it all the time it's something that happens throughout our lives and then there is a majority of the percentage which happens in women so having said that i'll leave the floor to you yeah absolutely so i love the change of from syndrome to phenomenon because with a syndrome that would imply it's a diagnosis that would mean that there's a cure there's a fix you take a pill or you do a certain treatment and it's over, it's gone, right? But the truth is um, a phenomenon means it can happen more than once. Um, it comes up in our lives at different points in our lives. So 
um, I really liked that distinction. And so what I, what I personally have experienced with imposter syndrome and what I tell my clients is that no matter if you identify as a high achiever or you're very ambitious or a perfectionist, whoever you are, um, it's just, you have this commonality deep down that you feel like a fraud. You feel like no matter the accomplishments you've done, um, they're basically a result of just serendipitous luck, or you're just really not deserving or you're not worthy um, of these accomplishments that you've done. And so, you know, going back to just kind of that clinical piece. So um, for us in the United States, we have a, um, it's called the DSM. And that's basically just a, a handbook of diagnosis um, that therapists and psychiatrists, doctors use um, to, to basically look at symptoms and say, okay, based on, you know, five out of the nine, this is, you know, what we're suggesting that you have and here's medication for it and whatnot. So the DSM, um, it's just a guide of mental health disorders, but the imposter syndrome is not in there. It's not a diagnosis. It's just kind of a result. And so for um, internationally, it's the ICD, I believe, um, International Classified of Diseases, which is the World Health Organization. Um, so similar of just this is a code of diagnosis um, on a more global scale. Um, um, I think it's by the United Nations sy system. So anyway, imposter syndrome is not in there. It is just something that we all experience in, in different parts of our life. Perfect. Um, I um, Sorry, for anyone that is watching or, or, for, or for anyone... Uh, that uh, sees this video later. You can you can add com you can put comments and questions now, or you can put comments and questions retroactively, and we will retroactively uh, answer if if that's uh, later in the video. Um, so thanks very much for the definition. I, I guess the, the the key points that we're we're saying is uh, that um, uh, first of all, it cannot be cannot be diagnosed. Uh, it's not in any manual uh, where it specify it, it specifies it as something that can be clearly uh, diagnosed through a set of um, uh, through, a, through a set of diagnosed techniques. Um, and uh, the other thing is that it's, um, that we said it's a, it's a feeling of, fr of fraudulence uh, that, um, that people go through uh, at some point during their lives. And it can happen several times. It can happen one time, uh, once in a lifetime. Um, and it affects uh, around 80 83% of, of the population. Just wanted to make a summary of it. <laughs> um, I really like what you said that it cannot be diagnosed, uh, and in, it's not in it's not in any any, any manual regulation uh, manual, um, neither in the, internationally or neither in the in the US. Um, so that brings me to the next point. It's the fact, okay, it cannot be diagnosed. We we know it happens, but mm -hmm. how can it how can it be identified if it cannot be officially diagnosed? Right. And and here, um, I, I know that there are some frameworks um, that uh, give a, a guidance, but even, even if you were like, I, I know there are some questions that you can an ask yourself, say, well, are you, are you going through any of these? Um, but even if you were to answer yes to all of them or yes to one or three, it, it's not 100% sure that, you, that you're that actually suffering imposter phenomenon. It can be due to many different factors. Um, mm -hmm. So what would you say about how can we best identify it and how to, if we identify it, how to take that information into account into our lives? Sure. So I think some examples of let's just examine and be self-aware of our thoughts. What are the mm -hmm. thoughts that we're having on a regular basis? Um, I wrote down some examples here just for my notes, but basically just thoughts of, so fraudulence, um, you know, like, well, I don't even, I didn't even deserve this raise or this promotion because I didn't work hard enough. Or um, he only loves me because he hasn't realized I'm a shit show. Like uh, you're basically coming up with excuses and um, you're belittling, you're degrading your own worth and your accomplishments, right? Some other things like I shouldn't, I shouldn't even celebrate success um, because it was some random luck that I got this job or I got this whatever. Um, you know, everyone's going to realize I'm a fraud. So being maybe paranoid that people are, um, 
you know, people are like looking at you and wondering, well, how, why are they so successful? Right. And just really any praise um, feels undeserved. So I guess first is acknowledge what are the thoughts that I'm having? Am I having any similar kind of thoughts and how often? So the frequency, right? Mm -hmm. So it's okay. It's totally normal to have like one of those thoughts maybe every now and then. Um, but then how quick are you to just brush it off? Or are you still repeating and repeating like, no, 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 no. Like this isn't, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. What am I doing? Just kind of spiraling. So can we first acknowledge those type of thoughts? Um, I think is really important. And um, I do have tips for how we can overcompensate those thoughts. And I do think we have, um, there's actually five different traits um, that are even more specific that you can identify with. But before I go on to that, um, what's resonating with you as I talk about that? Um, it's um, the fact that, the, that, that it's uh, that is those thoughts that, well, the importance of what you said, or the importance that what resonates the most with me of what you said is the how heavy those thoughts um, are weighing, weighing on, on, on that person, whether whether they they are you know like they they have those thoughts like everyone has those thoughts so well, most of the people have those thoughts at some point on their brain um, but it's how easily you can just let them go mm -hmm. uh, or whether they stay there they're always present you know and they and they push you down throughout the things that you do I guess that's that's a, that's my biggest take off here uh, that thing and I guess I guess I guess that's that, that would be one of the um, biggest reasons of why a person should say okay well I, I actually really am suffering of imposter syndrome and i need to do something about it mm -hmm. right is it is that that frequency and that ability to shake it off if you will but like usually the rule of thumb with anything whether that's anxiety depression pretty much any kind of mental health is whatever I'm going through, the challenge and the struggle, is it interfering the other parts of my day? Is it interfering in my life? And that's when we would suggest, you know, talking to a therapist or a psychiatrist or something like that is when it's really impacting and you cannot live your life. So if, um, you know, we can talk about all, you know, like, pretty much like medical signs and symptoms of seeking help. We can talk about that, but at the end of the day, yeah, just noticing these thoughts, normalizing them that we're all insecure. We're all not perfect. So of course we're going to have thoughts now and then, but how much am I actually believing that I am not worthy or that I'm a fraud? Like how, how real is it for you? And so um, I think that can segue into maybe the traits um, yep, for me yep. to, just to identify. So one of them is called um, the perfectionist. And I call myself a recovering perfectionist. Um, I say that all the time to my clients, I'm still working on it, right. Um, and it's basically someone who just always like, if there's any slight errors in anything in their life, um, it leads to shame or guilt, um, high anxiety, you know, doubt and worry that everything needs to be perfect in its own way and really setting these very extreme goals, right? And that they have so much to do. And so you're, you are a perfectionist if you, um, you don't really celebrate any of your achievements, right? You're known as ambitious, high achiever, but you're not even celebrating it. You're not even acknowledging your own badassery, right? So you're really just fixating on the flaws and mistakes. Um, and so you become a my are, are you smiling because that I, I love no it's it just I love that word badassery yes I, yeah it's like, badassery badassery um, let's let's add to the dictionary the the badasser uh, verb <laughs> now <laughs> so um, yeah and maybe you've been accused of like a micromanager or something like that but at the end of the day you know with all of these ambitions and things and getting things right um, you're not you're not honoring your celebrations. So what's the point, right? So instead, what I would encourage, if any of that resonates with you, what I would encourage you to do for all you perfectionists out there um, to challenge this imposter phenomenon 
is really just owning and celebrating your um, achievements, right? It's essential so that we can avoid burnout and um, really find contentment and self-confidence of like, you know what, I did this, this was a small step, um, but actually it was a big step, right? And so just also learning from your mistakes. If we hyper-focus on only the flaws and mistakes, there's no room to learn or grow. We're just going to like say negative things. So let's make, let's, let's learn from our mistakes and strive and really force yourself to say, um, you know, I accept that I made this mistake. And if I want to keep being a badass, I'm going to learn what can I do next and honor that I tried my best. So that's what I would say about the perfectionism. Any, any comments or uh, reactions to that kind of archetype? No, it's, it's great. I, I'm going to say, Niha on the comments was, was saying that she, she's, she, she feels very related to, uh, to, this, uh, to the perfectionist role. Um, so my comments would be, the getaways that I get from you would say, okay, if you are a perfectionist and within the realm of your capabilities to celebrate your wins, to celebrate your, your, your successes, even, if, even, even the small ones um, on the day to day, because that's progress, a small success is still progress. Um, and then the learning from mistakes. And this, in this, it's not always easy because it's, you have to identify it's, it's a mistake <laughs> or, 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 or that something went wrong and why. Uh, so I guess uh, to complement what you said, perhaps self-reflection or a third party view can help you know uh, mm, yes. can, can help when learning from mistakes i love that perfect um and so the next i guess archetype or characteristic is called the superhero and all of these by the way that i'm listing off you can find them on google i didn't make this up <laughs> but <laughs> this is where i'm just capturing for you signs and symptoms and way for you to overcome so the superhero um is someone who basically they have a lot of different roles in their life. They're a parent, a boss, a teacher, whatever. Um, and if they can't do it all perfectly, then they feel like a fraud, right? So similar to perfectionism. I mean, there's, there's hints of perfectionism in all of these characteristics. But um, basically, you're a superhero if you might be classified a workaholic. Um, you push yourself very hard. Um, you feel burnout, whether that's like physically or mental health wise. And you're just over promising, you're over delivering because you think you need to do all the things like you think you have to carry the world on your shoulders. Um, and with good intentions as that is, right, that you want to help, you want to serve, you want to do all the things because you're awesome. Um, instead, why don't we train ourselves um, away from, I guess, external validation, because sometimes when we're at work, Maybe you're that type of person who really needs the praise, like, oh, good job. Oh, you're doing really well. So that, of course, is going to build our ego of like, yeah, I can. I can do all the things. But like getting, stepping away from external validation that no one else should make you feel um, empowered, that like it's nice to get a compliment, but do you feel that you've done a good job? Can you say, um, I've done this, I've done the best I could. Now it's actually time to delegate. You know, I'm, I'm the, it's basically that oxygen mask metaphor. When you get on a plane, you put it on first before the children, yes. because, and I always thought that was weird when I was growing up. I was like, what do you mean? Put it on me, the kid first, but no, like how, how can you help someone else if you don't help yourself? So yeah. I would encourage the superhero to be really attuned to internal validation, nurture that inner confidence um, and really just be willing to delegate if needed so that you can offer and give more. That's, that's brilliant. I, 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 um, I would, sorry, I want to take just a moment to say hi to Raul Kumar, who was, uh, who said hi on the comments. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I, I love the, the, the analogy of the of the of the mask, the oxygen mask. That's 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 actually one that I use very often, and I used it the other the, with with my father because he's um, just an anecdote. He's actually uh, doing training for uh, nurses, uh, and he was telling telling in on the training saying the most important things that you look after yourself first because otherwise you're not going to be able to look after anyone. Uh, and I told him, please use this analogy on the training. <laughs> yes. Um, I love that. 
so, sorry about the superhero. Um, the the big takeaway that I take um, it's a bit about how how okay what what happens if you're a superhero? What happens if you use uh, you know you you're just going forward, uh, putting a strain on yourself potentially, ignoring anyone's praises? Um, I and I'm going to ask you this, but uh, is it possible that by being a superhero in this sense uh, of the imposter syndrome, you could be hurting potentially your inner child? Totally. Yeah. Tell me more um, what brought you to that conclusion. Um, because guilty of char <laughs> charge, I went through that. It is, the, it, it's that, um, being demanding on yourself, say I should be doing this, and I'm going to do that, and you know it's and it's never enough of what you're doing. Uh, and uh, my counselor at the time, um, well, she's just in my counselor. Also, I'm not I'm not seeing her much. <laughs> um, she uh, she rec she recommended me to do a bit of introspection and do an exercise into visiting my my inner child child, and you say, okay, it's fine. I mean, you you you're 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 hurting. You're scared. Everything is overwhelming. Uh, don't worry. I grew up. I'm going to protect you. Yes, let it go. Don't worry about anything. I'll I'll take it from there. I know what I'm doing. Um, so that's and 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 it came up. It came from that type of role or, or that type of profile uh, of demanding myself and saying, "Yeah, I have to do everything." You know, hey, there you go. That was a way for you to. You know, by doing all the things, being the superhero was a way to protect your inner child and knowing, like, if you can have a conversation, this is for anyone listening, if you can go back to your inner child and, like, really talk to him or her, like, talk to them and say, you are fine. I'm here with you. I'll always be here for you. I don't have to do everything to prove to you that you're safe. You are safe. So kind of even just acknowledging um, the safety and security that you hold within yourself. Beautiful. I love it. I love the, the inner child uh, exercise. Um, awesome. Okay. Um, so what's next? Yes, we have um, the expert. So this person in the title, right, seeks to know everything. Um, and so even the slightest lack of knowledge, eh, that is the biggest failure, right? Like, um, they just don't feel satisfied when they, um, when finishing a task, when they have to know everything about it. And so it's, it's kind of obsessive of like, I must know everything or I don't know anything. So pretty black or white thinking here. Um, so the time spent searching for the information that they don't know really like impedes other tasks and impedes other things. So, you know, you're the expert, <clears throat> excuse me, when um, you, you basically, you have to know everything about this thing, um, otherwise you're not gonna do it at all or you're not, you know, you're gonna think you're a failure. And um, I would say if, if you identify with any of that, something that you can work on instead is, um, well, understand that the more you, the more you don't know, the more actually empowering it is because I can only assume that your need to know everything means you love to learn. Maybe you really value um, just having a bunch of information at your fingertips, and that's like a beautiful thing. But you can't, I, you can't tie that to your identity. You can't tie to needing to know everything with, well, that equals failure. So instead, I would encourage, how can I still learn and make it more of a game, make it more playful, um, and like, I, I want to learn this out of joy, not out of this ties to my work. So kind of separating the relationship you have with knowing everything. And I'd also say, since you are an expert, um, uh, we all are experts in our own way, maybe mentor somebody mentor or volunteer could be a great way to, um, really discover that inner expert and just share that knowledge with others, um, spread the wealth, spread the power of knowledge. Um, that could definitely be helpful too if you identify with that. Could it be um, that somebody uh, and, uh, <laughs> undergoing through an expert profile, um, could it be that they are reluctant to recognize that they don't know something? 
Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and in, in that sense, it's worse in the long run, isn't it? Yeah. So when, so are you saying like, I'm reluctant to even like go for it because I don't know everything or what do you mean? So for instance, imagine, and, and, and I, I've seen this happen a lot uh, during, during meetings um, uh, in my other life. <laughs> uh, you go in through meetings and people talk about things as if everyone is supposed to, to know everything. Um, there are many, there, there, is a, there is a profile of people that are like, oh, hold on a second. What do you mean when you, when you mention this concept? I, I never heard it before. Those are the people that don't say anything. You know, just in case they, they don't want to be found out. You know, they don't oh, want to be found out as, yeah, as, yeah, yeah. as, as they, they, they don't know something that they should be allegedly be knowing or in yeah. their head they should be allegedly be knowing. Yeah, so kind of embarrassed, right? Of like, oh, the jig is up. Like, they caught me. I actually don't know everything. Um, that could be fear. And so, yeah, and so reluctant to share information. I don't know. I mean, to be frank, uh, I find it very attractive when someone acknowledges they don't know everything. I really do. Like, if you can really just admit there is so much of the world out there and like there's new jobs every day. There's new things on social media. There's trends. Like there's no possible way that someone could know everything. And I think that's just so just in my opinion, like it's so freeing that I don't have to know everything. I don't, I don't want that pressure on myself. I don't, I don't know. I just think it's very attractive when someone's like, Nope, I don't know because you're being authentic. You're being honest. And, and if you say, I don't know, but I'm willing to learn, it's just like when you, you know, try a new job, um, and you, maybe you don't feel qualified, but you got hired anyway. That's something you say to your employer, right? I don't have that information, but I'll make sure to get that for you. Right. That's something you say to like your customer. So it's, yep. you're basically, sh- you're, you're acknowledging, I don't know, and I'm still willing to learn, or I'm, I'm excited to, to find out that information, but not out of well, I have to know everything because I have to, like these have tos and shoulds yeah, is what yeah. I would challenge the expert to to really journal on and see what's that really about. Love this. Okay, so 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 here two two things I wanted to separate. The first thing, when you don't know something, depending on who is the other person that you're talking to, you can ask for it. You know, they could, you can ask them directly. Say, oh, just let me know what. Let's learn something. What 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 um uh what is this concept? If it's a customer or somebody, even if it's an internal customer, so somebody to whom you cannot ask, you have to give them a solution. You don't bring them a problem. You give them a solution. Okay, okay. Um, oh, sorry. At this point, in, I don't have this. As you were saying, I don't have the information, but I will make sure to refer to this person. Or I will make sure to go away and, and, and make sure that you have this information by the end of, uh, by the, end of the day. Something like that. Um, perfect. Thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, so the next two... Oh, and I saw in the comments too, someone yeah, yeah. said, um, yeah, I agree that a lot. It's not very often that you get to hear such honesty. Um, so I just have two more. Okay. So the next one is the natural genius. And so um, this is someone, I mean, there's seriously, there's so many commonalities in all of these, but um, this is someone that's expect to meet really high goals very quickly and very effortlessly, right? If you're a natural genius, think of someone like, I don't know, like Beethoven or, because I, I believe Beethoven or one of them, Mozart, I don't know, someone <laughs> started at age, like a prodigy at age five or something, you know, just like you are naturally, like we, ex- we have very high expectations of you because you're mm-hmm. so good. Mm-hmm. So when things get difficult, um, when they get very ashamed and like feel that they're weak. Um, and so you're basically really crushed the minute you haven't mastered something. Um, it's similar to the expert, I would say. Um, but you're basically like, you are really like depleted of like, oh, well, why didn't I get this right away? That's not normal, right? Because that's, that's out of your perception. So I would say if you identify with that is just trying to see yourself as a work in progress, right? And so accomplishing um, great things really involves a lifetime. And it's skill building, right? So um, I guess rather saying, I guess like not saying you need to have such incredibly high standards of yourself because go for it. Like that's, that's important to you. Um, 
but notice that I'm also like still growing. I'm still learning. There's no expiration date on my life. I mean, there is eventually, but we don't know when we're going to die. So just know that like through time, I am a work in progress. I can learn. Um, For example, if you want to make, I guess, like more an impact in the office, um, it's just much more productive to just hone your presentational skills um, than like, like, let's just say, for example, like you have a presentation, hone in on the skills, hone in on the things that um, you know you're good at. And um, if there's something that you're really not good at, um, you can look at those areas without that pressure of, you know what, this is something I'm going to learn. So this is, it, this one's pretty similar to the expert, but I would say it, it's more maybe childhood, yep. inner child related because yep. you've had such a long time of being this genius. So I would say um, incorporate some of those, those traits as well. Love it. I mean, I love the, I love the, the, the story that you, you talked about, about Moser. And I think that's a perfect example for Mar- for many many kids around there in which they've been doing amazing in um, high school, then they arrive to uni and they pick a slap on the, head, on the face or the opposite, or, or they've been, you know, during the whole educational career or, all the way to major, double major, major in whatever, uh, you know, like all honors and, and, and having the, the biggest grades and then they get to the professional environment and pam a slap up and on on the face again they it's totally different you know they're they're no longer the best because it's totally it's it's, it's a different environment um it's uh, uh i can i can say that uh, I, I i was there uh, when i when i was very little uh, and i know of people that have also have have also uh gone through it uh and it's um it's what you say being conscious uh i don't want to put words of your mouth but what what i understood being conscious that there's always something to learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's very important because it prepares us for, for this moment and be open to it and embrace it and say, okay, it's, it's, it's not, too, it's not too, uh, for you to, to fall in the ground and cry. It's for you to be ready for it, embrace mm-hmm. it, and just go for it. Learn. I love that. What a beautiful summary. Yes. <laughs> um, and so my last one is uh, one of these five traits of um, imposter phenomenon that you might identify with. It's called the soloist. So this is someone who needs to do things alone. Don't They do not want help from anyone. If they ask for help, it's a sign of weakness. Um, so you consider yourself pretty individualistic and independent these aren't negative things, by the way, everything that I'm sharing on this, like, I'm not saying these are negative things that we're just acknowledging, we're just having some self awareness here. So you maybe like associate your self worth with productivity. Um, and you believe that asking for help is a failure or <laughs> incompetence. And so this one can be tricky, because um what i would suggest is to try to ask for help and see what that feels like um kind of like exposure where like the more i ask for help and just little things here and there i'll build that confidence and like normalize that asking for help is okay so create you know realize there's no shame in asking for help because also it kind of makes you arrogant that you're not going to ask for help because then it makes you think I don't know. That's just me being giving my opinion no one asked for. But it's like I I love asking for help because I acknowledge I don't know everything. We've said this earlier. Um, but just create a mindset that when you ask for help, this is improving my knowledge. Um, and sometimes when I don't know if, you, if this has happened to you before, but so I um, with clients that do want help with their career and I've told them, you know, we need to network, we need to do informational interviewing. And imagine being the other person on the other side, and someone's like, Oh, they want to come to me for help. And it like feels really good. (laughs) So it's like, yes, maybe it's painful for you asking for help. But the other person like, you just maybe made their day, um, because they asked, you're an expert, right. And so I would just challenge that mindset of like, why are you associating it, um, asking for help as a negative? 
Um, there's no shame. This doesn't make you a fraud because you don't know everything. This is actually showing confidence and showing that you want to learn and you want to um, overall help. Brilliant. I, 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 uh, I have a comment around the solis, but before we get into that, I really like something that you said about all these roles or, or kind of fitting the profile of these roles, uh, that it's not a negative thing. Mm -hmm. um, I guess externally or from a third party point of view, falling into those roles could be seen as something negative mm -hmm. as long as it's uh, damaging person or the persons or the people around them right um but of course it's always down to the person to decide whether that's a negative thing mm -hmm. yeah it's it's definitely your perception i mean we all have negative traits we all have things <laughs> we want to work on that's life we're growing so always the first step really if and if you don't identify with any of those actual characters but maybe there's some things here and there, or when I was saying earlier um, in the video about like, oh, well, you know, this is just out of luck or meh, like maybe in general you have low self-esteem or low <laughs> confidence, right? So I would just say the first step is awareness. Can we notice our thoughts? Can we uh, take a pen and paper, start journaling about your relationship with asking for help? Um, why is it that I have to have so many things? Is this tied to my worth? Does being productive or being busy mean I'm important? Does that make me an expert? Okay, so if I'm an expert, what does that say about me? Does that mean I really just want validation and love and acceptance from other people? Like, And it helps to have a coach or someone to prompt these questions because I don't know how many people are just doing this on their own, but that's what we're here to do and help you and educate you to, to do this on your own. Um, but if you definitely want, you know, more support, that's what we're here to is to, to ask you those powerful questions. Perfect. Love that. I love that. Um, sorry, related to this, going back into the soloist, uh, mm -hmm. I, wanted, I wanted to point out the fact that when you are starting a job, uh, and especially when you are uh, starting a starting a career, um, most of the companies will ask you to be able to be a team player. Mm -hmm. they, they also want you to be able to work by yourself. What that does what does that mean? When when you're starting in, in a career, you are not expected to know everything. You are not expected to just go in and you know and be the expert on, of everything and just fly solo. You're ex you're you're expected to learn as much as you can to ask as many questions as you can. And then as you progress to ask less and less questions and rely on other people less, but still you will always have to work as a team. Yes, that's absolutely important. Right. And being a team player, because you don't want to be that person that like, that happened to me in school a lot when we did group work. I, I really hated groups because Either someone was a show off or someone didn't do the work. And so it was always like, okay, I guess I'm me perfectionist, right? Okay, I'll take it on. I'll <laughs> a superhero, right? Just, but you don't want to be that person that isn't a team player. You don't want to be that person that's like, oh, I don't want, I don't want Paige on this project because they're arrogant or they don't, they don't, I don't know, insert whatever reason. So that's really important that you bring that up of companies really want that team effort and, um, and willingness to learn. Precisely. Perfect. Lovely. Lovely. Um, the third point that I had in the agenda, and perhaps we can make this a bit short. I wanted to ask you in your, in your um, position as an expert, what do you think is the link from the imposter phenomenon to uh, the loss of self-esteem of a person? Sure. Um, I think low self-esteem is, uh, I guess, a symptom. It can be a symptom of imposter syndrome because that's what the, the self-doubt is coming from. So, but when I think of low self-esteem, um, I think of someone that really doesn't trust themselves. Um, and what I mean by that, like, you're not, you don't believe what you say. You don't reinforce boundaries. You don't stick up for yourself. Um, you say very negative things about yourself. Um, and sometimes you joke 
about yourself in a negative way. Um, and you're blaming yourself when things go wrong. Um, you're thinking other people are better than you. I get a different vibration, even as I'm talking, right? I'm kind of like slowing down. And like, I, I just, I see basically a low self-esteem has this cloud. Um, and that is very consistent. Um, and so I think with imposter phenomenon, those might be more, um, not activity based, but situational. <laughs> so whether that's promotion, uh, oh, I got in a fight with my boyfriend, like whatever. Um, I think imposter phenomenon symptoms and who you are, those come up when it's situational. But low self-esteem, I think, in general, is more like who you like, not who you are, but just what you experience on a day to day. So I think you don't have to have imposter phenomenon and have low self-esteem. It's not one without the other. It's not correlation and causation. It's none of that. It's just um, I think it is a different energy and a different um, experience when you have low self-esteem. Did that clarify? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh... It's, it's tricky to understand uh, because, as you say, low, low self-esteem is a symptom, but it doesn't have to be, you, you were saying uh, that it doesn't have to be due to imposter mm -hmm. phenomenon. Uh, mm -hmm. they, are, they are like kind of separated. Mm -hmm. um, however, it's, it's, very, it's very tricky so, sometimes to, 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 to mm -hmm. see where, where one starts and the other finishes when they happen right. at the same time. Right. Um, Sorry, I'm gonna just 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 a small uh, interlude for a second. I'm gonna say yeah. hi to my mom because she's watching. Hi, mom, Madre. <laughs> uh, she doesn't understand English. Uh, she's she. If I speak slowly, maybe she will understand what I am saying. But anyway, <laughs> just sorry, an interlude. <laughs> I wish they had. Um, well, when you make this live into a video, will they have captions or in different languages? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know either. I'll, I'll have, you know, I'll write it down for <laughs> the future, you know? <laughs> Who knows? Hi, Mom. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. So uh, that uh, brings us to, to the last topic, uh, or at least the last topic that I have on my, uh, on my agenda. It doesn't mean that it, it is the end. Um, it's basically how can we overcome it how, mm -hmm. what, um, what can we do by ourselves or what can we do with the help of other people in order to overcome our status of imposter phenomenon? So it's funny because when I think of the word overcome, for me, sometimes that's like, oh, well, then it's done, right? Like it's a closed case, uh, we're finished. And I think with imposter phenomenon, it's, it can be ongoing, it could come in spurts or whatever. So although it's not a hard answer, you do this, and then you won't have imposter mm -hmm. syndrome mm -hmm. phenomenon anymore. Um, the first thing to do is just, I'm going to repeat, repeat, self awareness, mm -hmm. check in with your thoughts. Um, and for someone that doesn't really know how to do that, I would say start with um, maybe having on your like the note section in your phone or like a sticky note, but just like start just jotting things down, J jotting down just some thoughts that you have um, that you're starting to notice like, wow, I'm, I'm having this thought pretty often, right? And it's positive or negative, doesn't really matter, but let's have some self-awareness on, am I even having um, imposter phenom phenomenon type thoughts? Am I doubting my beliefs? Am I thinking I'm a fraud? And then how often am I doing that? So another way to just, I guess, deal with and overcome is just self-acceptance that this is going to come in waves of life, you know, self-esteem, confidence, it's going to be a roller coaster sometimes, depending on what it is, right? Um, and if, especially if we're learning something new, I think that's when imposter phenomena is the loudest because you're brand new at this thing and you want to be great. Um, so giving yourself grace is a tip. I always tell my clients for anything, whatever you start, whatever you're working on is I'm learning. It's okay. 
maybe practicing some um, affirmations like that of like everything will be okay or I'm amazing regardless or despite my productivity. Um, having some type of, of statement and belief that you're still a badass, you're still amazing, even though these thoughts and these beliefs are going to come and go. So just, I guess, some other tips too, is just accept that you're a work in progress. Everyone makes mistakes and just learn to fail better. So learn from your failures. They're not really failures. They're just, just a different avenue to learn. Brilliant. I'm going to take the words from Nelson Mandela saying, never failing, only learning. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, right. So things that, you, that, are, that, are, that I like that you said. Um, I asked you how to overcome it, and you immediately came to the rescue and said, well, really, we cannot just, you know, magic one and ploop gone. Uh, it's techniques, tools that we can have in our arsenal in order to manage it, to manage impulsive phenomena, like, like everything in life. It's, we have to learn how to manage the things that go in our lives. So we have to have our tools, uh, you know, a tool set. And then um, I like the, what you said about practicing affirmations. I know that there's lots of people that uh, start the morning in, the, in, in front of the mirror, telling themselves mm -hmm. that the, you're amazing, you're a badass, a go girl, <laughs> slay, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. Go for it. Um, then I like the uh, writing down your thoughts. And, and I, I, in my head, poof, I had the... I had, um, the the idea the idea the, the, I really I, I linked it to journaling your thoughts mm -hmm. and I like a lot of self reflection I I I I, I think self reflection is an art in itself um, so when you do self reflection and this is something that uh, that I recommend to anyone have a set of questions that you think they're going to help you and the, the question that I think you said would be key here to ask yourself if not periodically, you know, like weekly or, or mm -hmm. as, as much as you can is, have I had any negative thoughts? If you cannot capture them on the spot, whether you can capture them later on and say, oh, hold on, this happened today. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can be aware of them. And then I'm going to add my grain of salt here. Uh, and it's uh, techniques like having a third party view, which can be your family, your friends, your colleagues. They can tell you, hey, you're talking about these things. Are you okay? Uh, mm -hmm. Or a counselor, a coach mm -hmm. that can tell you, well, I'm going to take this, what you say, if we would it within this context. Do you see that it doesn't make sense or it's, it, it's not sounding like you? Um, or... Uh, some, a technique that, uh, that I like to recommend to, to, all my, to all my clients when they are trying to uh, develop themselves or get a promotion is to do a 360. I, mm. I love 360s. I think that um, taking people that you think their opinion can be relevant and that they don't love you unconditionally because we know, we know what happens when people love you unconditionally. We don't take their exactly. opinion in consideration as much as random people from the street for some reason. Um, I think it's very, it's, it's very important if you can do a 360 about a specific topic with people you respect and, and, and that they don't have unconditional love for you and that uh, they, can, uh, they can give you uh, their views on that specific topic. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love that summary. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Um, so we have, I mean, we can finish now. We have some minutes. We can finish in half an hour. It doesn't matter. But um, I had a thought on my head is, would you like to share your, if you have any, of course, your experiences with imposter phenomenon? Sure. Um, I would, the freshest one that comes to mind is starting my business. Um, I made the transition from being a therapist. Um, I felt really burnt out and, um, I, I just, I knew this was something I couldn't, it couldn't be sustainable. Um, I wasn't taking care of myself mentally. So how on earth can I be a proper therapist for someone else? And so I had to swallow my pride and uh, basically that expert, that superhero, all of those traits, right, that we described in this video, I had to take it of, it's okay. Like I'm it's okay to take a pause. It's okay to make a career shift. And so when I found coaching um, as an industry, 
that really resonated with me. And it just, um, it's, it's the type of people I want to work with. It's the modalities I want to teach and provide these types of services instead of therapy. So anyway, not only did I have to make a career transition, but starting a business from scratch, never done that before, never really wanted to, um, like that was never like a dream of mine. So <laughs> I had to get over um, my beliefs that I'm not good enough um, to do this, or there's millions of coaches already out there. Why am I any different? Why is my services why would people pay me money? Um, a lot of um, just imposter syndrome thoughts of like, well, who am I? Like, and so I've had coaches and mentors share with me, Paige, instead of saying like, well, who am I to do this? Who am I not to? Because I have so much value I bring to the table, so much expertise. And then that's when I started growing into my empowerment of, wait, I am a badass. Like, I went to school for so many years. I have so much life experience. All I want to do is help people. Yes, I. this is now my purpose. This is my passion to do this. So I had to flip it on its head of instead of this, well, I don't know. Like, I don't think I'm good enough to... No, I am because I know my worth and that took time. It took time, not only worth and value financially um, of my prices and things like that, but it's also just who I am as a person and the services I provide. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of my imposter syndrome journey, at least with um, um, starting my business. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. I have to say um, I went through the same thing when I started my business three years ago. Uh, and I totally agree that having mentors, well, I, of course I have my super, my, my coaching supervisor with, with whom I, I do my, my coaching supervision in order to keep up to date. Um, uh, so totally can relate with everything that you, that you were saying. Uh, I guess if I have to be, give a, an experience of mine, I'm going to give one that might be more relevant for my clients and is at some point during my career when I was starting, I was, um, I wasn't very senior yet and I was on my way to become a senior manager. Um, I started to gain responsibility and I started to having all these meetings with executive leaders uh, and the expectations were high. Uh, and when they were asking questions, the different companies and different corporations work in different manners. There are some times in which you will find yourself in, in a place in which people are more demanding or more ruthless than they should be. And you should be saying, hey, it's only a job, but hey. So that can put a big strain on a young professional. And at the mm -hmm. point I felt that strain and, and, and I didn't know how to react. I didn't want to say that I didn't know something or that I didn't have mm -hmm. the solution to something. I didn't know how to face that. I was feeling, oh, I don't want to be found out as a fake, like I don't deserve mm -hmm. to become a senior manager. And mm -hmm. I, I got involved into, uh, into that uh, wheel, basically. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a wheel for me. Like it, it was going on and on and on, like a snowball. Um, mm -hmm. How did I get out of that? Yeah, how did you do that? <laughs> um, yes, counseling helped me quite a bit. Um, they made me realize that... Uh, uh, that it wasn't really my problem. It was, uh, it, it was people putting uh, pressure on me that I shouldn't really have. And I tried to understand how to best face those scenarios. So I did a lot of, uh, we did lots of mock-up um, scenarios in which they were, uh, my counselor was uh, behaving like a C word. <laughs> mm -hmm. for me to be in the worst case scenario and be try and be able to um get used to how to react to those uh, to those situations in the best way and be able to shift the, the situation in, in in a way that you can you can easily say don't either have the answer now as we were saying early on with i have the answer now this is the solution that i have at this point in time mm -hmm. yeah. uh that helped me a lot and and that's the way that i became a senior manager uh, at that point in, in, my, in my career. Thank you for sharing that and being vulnerable and um, acknowledging that, <laughs> wait, how did I get out of it? 
you did. And that's, the, that's the beauty is even when we're in that snowball, we don't, we don't see an outcome, especially <laughs> when you're in the thick of it. You don't, you really, you don't think it's going to get better. You don't, you don't really have the tools. So hopefully for those that are watching and listening can walk away with that awareness of, you know, is this really me? And what do I want to do about it? If I want to do anything about it too, that's ultimately your choice too, is um, do I want to take action with my imposter phenomenon thoughts? Absolutely. And um, it's, it's something, uh, it's something that you were mentioning earlier, like the aware, the awareness is very difficult because as you were saying, when you are in the, in the thick of it, of it, of it, mm -hmm. um, It, it's a bit like um, Stockholm Syndrome. Like you don't know that mm -hmm. you're actually being bullied or, okay, let's say bullied, but, but that, you, you, that you're suffering uh, this type of uh, indirect aggression. Um, mm -hmm. And it's normally by comparing it or, or by somebody pointing, pointing it out at you that you realize that. Um, if anyone is watching this and you feel related uh, to that situation that I was describing, um, you can get out of this. You can you can go to if if you think you, you need counseling services, they can help you. If, if you think that it's that it's a deep uh, rooted problem, but you can also get the help of, of a coach. In this case, you you can have both with uh, with Paige. You can have both the counseling side and the coaching side. Uh, or if you want a more a more a more uh, career coaching uh, point of view, you can you can come to me. Whichever you feel more comfortable with, and you have to resonate with your coach. That's very, that's something very important. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, anything else from your side, Paige? Is there anything else that you want to add? I don't think so. Um, I really appreciate this conversation. And um, I can't wait to share, you know, this video with my demographic and just reminding people of, you know, if you have any, um, if you have any thoughts of, well, I didn't deserve this thing, or I shouldn't celebrate my success because blank or you know everyone's gonna realize I'm a fraud you know all of these thoughts they're normal and so I want to just normalize it especially if you're in a new situation if you're trying something new and you're learning just remember that you're a work in progress so um, make sure to seek the help that you need go to friends and family for advice and if like um, like you said if you need more support we are here to here to guide you in the right direction Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks very much, Paige. Thank I you. really appreciate you joining me on on on, the, on the live, this live session. I know it's too late, but uh, Paige, do you are you comfortable sharing your pronouns with uh, with the audience? Yes, of course. I'm she, her, hers. Perfect, brilliant. Thanks very much. And for everyone, I'm Seth the real. My pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, this uh, video or this live session, whether whether you're watching it uh, on <laughs> on time or later on. Um, and if you have any questions, again, put them in the comments, uh, or you can refer directly to to Paige, or you can refer directly to me. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Paige. I will speak to you Thank soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay.